All right. Done. <laughs> it's okay. Anyways, as we get started, looks like on the blue side is going to be not allowed to lose. We have UF Ulursa on the Shen. Krusty Fart Milker, that is Lobster Man in the jungle, playing the Cane. Fat Booty in the mid lane, playing Zerath, Dark Scorpion, and Unicorn in the bot lane. They have Lucian and Nami. Why don't you give me the Beast Coast side All right, of so for Beast Coast, we have Vase playing the... What champion is that? That is a Poppy. Excuse me. Um, we also have the you Rammus really sure for Salamander Man in the jungle. We have an Ari for Adam in mid lane. Bot lane, we have Jinx and Lux for Lord Skellington and Hyperion, respectively. Sweet. So, when we first look at these comps, uh, you, you kind of know this better than me. What are some, like, kind of strategies that each team is kind of looking for with these Well, drafts? as I previously mentioned, these teams kind of have two different styles where one wants to split push and the other wants to team fight. But what we actually are looking at here now is a little bit more of a five-on-five -five action sort of style. Um, and if anything, actually, the not-allowed-to-lose team might even have a little bit more potential for that 4-1 split. But we'll see how this plays into. But what we have looking for is massive AoE and crowd control sort of damage coming out of Beast Coast's team with the Lux, with the Ari, and of course the amazing crowd control from Poppy. Um, and of course Jinx Rocket resets and all that fun stuff in team fights. Um, on the blue side, however, we have a little bit more of an early game focus, a little bit more of split the map and look for picks, um, sort of. But they're still going to be massive in team fights with the Xerath AoE and plenty of crowd control and uh, utility coming out of the Shen and Nami. So that's what we have to look forward to. Now, if if you ask me, if if assuming this thing gets late and we start hitting the point where big team fights need to happen, I almost am worried about not not allowed to lose this draft because it doesn't really feel like they have a great way to engage team call, or team fights. It feels like you know what they can do is kind of submarine the sh not it's not necessarily a submarine, <laughs> but they can probably drop, drop the Shen on top of the cane, assuming uh, you know Lobster Man, Crusty Fart Milker, he he goes the red cane and you get get a good knock up to start a fight, but um right. Other than that, there, there, there's, there's not too many great ways to start a fight, but, you know, as we had mentioned, they do have a great pick potential. But I almost think that a Beast Coast comp seems a little bit easier to pull off. Right, so Beast Coast is probably a little bit easier to pull off. That's the press a button, get an engage. Press a button, and you have your team fight started. Um, blue side is definitely a little bit trickier to start, but you still have Nami ult to get a fight started. And as you mentioned, you also have the pseudo submarine. Oh, looks like we have a little skirmish here in the jungle. Yep. Trusty Farm going a little bit low. He is up a level on the Ramus, but Ramus is Ramus things. Ramus is damage because Ramus is a tank and tanks have base stats. Hashtag stat check. <laughs> uh, and top lane, though, Vase is getting a good little chunk out of Volursa there. And, and then with a little Yordle yeah, hammer. We had a big rotation yeah. there from red side, putting pressure on top side. It looks like that's just going to dispel here. Yeah, I'm I'm almost wondering, too, if... Um, if uh, Beast Coast, if they can put down enough pressure, oh, that, that's a great charm out of Adam. It's going to do a good chunk of damage to Fat Booty. Drawing about a half HP. Burns, finally burns through his pots there. Good advantage for Adam. Oh, but Vase goes in. He might have a solo key here on the Dolores that gets the shield from the sword. Yeah. It's a sword it's crucial shield. to save his summoner. As soon as that summoner goes down, that's a red flag. We engage on Pot, though. It's a flash forward by Dark Scorpion. Heal and Ignite doesn't actually kill. Hyperion, but she'll be low, but that's another great route. On a Unicorn, now she's a force to flash out, and we have a lot of burnt summoners in the bot lane. Uh, just a flash up for Beast Coast on uh, Lord Skellington, and then for not allowed to lose, it is healing Ignite. Oh, we're still going out, just getting Dark Scorch Pain against the first kill. That's a great bubble. Ignite dropped down to Lord Skellington, he flashes up, but it's too little, too late. That's a double kill for Dark Scorpion on that Lucian. Right, as we mentioned, we were expecting quite a hype battle here because both these teams put up aggressive performances in their first games. And we see a lot of that here in both side lanes, actually, almost simultaneously. Summoners burn across the board, and now... The junglers, even though First Blood's already down, they're going to be looking to follow up a lot of these burnt summoners and really try to punish these lanes. Lulursa, they're so low on top lane on this Shen. He's going to try to get as much of that CS as he can back here. He does have that TP available, and since he'll be almost 6, he will still have the, um... God, what's it called? Stand United. Ultimate. I shouldn't... So yeah, he, he, he should have Stand United available. Four team fights should he need it, obviously, you know, Right, Shen. and that's one of the benefits no, of Shen, to too. If you burn your TP to get back to lane, as he's doing here, you still have that level 6 ultimate to match the Poppy Teleport, even beat it. 
um, to a team fight. So you still have a lot of cross map pressure. So even though you'll be burning some TPs, looks like it's just going to be a little bit of a wet noodle fight up in top lane. I think from here on out, these two champions are going to get pretty tanky. And we should see a lot more action uh, onto the mid and bot lane, especially now with the Lucian two kills ahead. Yeah, and Hyperion actually in a really sneaky spot there on the Raptor side, looking to get a good binding down on Fat Booty on this Yeah, side. it looks like the support and the jungle for Beast Coast here, or excuse me, yeah, that's right, um, were able to sneak their way into the bot side jungle and kind of force Kane out, take Raptors, get some good deep vision down, and put some pressure on the mid lane. So we'll see if that results in anything. It doesn't look like it for now, but now they have some ideas of where Kane might be and be able to track him throughout the map. So with a little bit of a gold lead here on the bot lane, two kills early onto the Lucian, you might think that you have enough pressure to, to control the bot side, yet we don't see a Cressy Fart Milker towards that side of the map, but instead it's been Sonic Man is focusing there. Why do you think maybe, uh, or why, why is this that uh, Not Allowed to Lose is really not focusing on getting their bot lane even further ahead? Well, they might not need to put extra resources to getting them ahead. They're already kind of winning in the 2v2, regardless of jungler intervention. So it's probably up to Salamander Man to keep that lane in neutral as opposed to um, Lobster Man trying to get the lane even farther ahead. He's free to go to uh, the rest of the map and put pressure there while they need to kind of catch back up on the bot side on red side. Looks like we have some trouble here in mid lane. It'll be a slow landed onto Adam. Nothing else will happen there. Uh, Beast Coast continues to shove down in bot and down in top. So much map pressure for them, despite being down the two early kills. I mean, I, what we're actually seeing is a really, really fun jungle matchup. Both junglers have resorted to, to vertical jungling. Right. Uh, Christy Farmilker is completely on the top side of the map, and uh, South Man is completely on the bottom right. side of the map. You see, they're both in each other's jungles. <laughs> yeah, and this is totally a result of that 2v2 pressure that we saw, that first blood double kill. Uh, Red side just decided that you know what we've had enough of that. We're going to split this to vertical jungling, so we can't. You can't get a further lead in bot lane. Our bot lane is going to catch up because they need that jinx for team fighting. That jinx falls behind. This game gets a lot harder for Red side. It almost feels like too though this game will slow down. Although the, avail the availability of the Ocean Drake on the map and with Ramus on that bot side might give Beast Coasters enough time, if assuming they can get their lane shoved out. Maybe grab up that Ocean Drake and now will halt a little bit of harass that maybe an ahead Lucian would would uh would put on them in the mid game. Good chunk down to Hyperion goes down to about one third HP. That booty has some good damage there. Right, we see the first Drake spawning and it happening. is an Ocean Drake, which is really, really strong in the early game, especially for the side lane. Um or the solo lane, excuse me. So right now you see Red Side putting pressure, getting wards down, and saying, hey, this is our dragon. If you want it, you have to come to us and fight us for it. Well, there's a being dropped kind of low here, but good trade on the Vase. Vase actually is Ooh. a minion. Reckless charge misses out. That would have been a good chunk of damage. Yeah, that might have been a force summoner. That, that would have yeah. been a lot of damage coming out of the poppy. Instead, it's just going to be forced back off there. Looking at the gold lead, it is 2k right now. On the side, not a lot of lose, just with those two kills. Uh, CS differential is entirely in the jungle favor. A 1,000 gold lead for Krusty Fart Milker over Salamander Man. Vertical jungling, obviously, going to be better. Or just in general, just jungling is going to favor the cane. Faster clear the uh, bonus damage onto his Q. I didn't think it'd be this bad early. Yeah, so that is one of the weaknesses of Ramus is his slow clear, and that's why you don't see it a whole lot in other higher level forms of organized play. But what it does offer is a solid front line to supplement the poppy that you already have. And so you have this massive wall that you have to get through if you want to get to the Jinx. So that is why they picked into this Ramus, even though he's going to struggle a little bit here early. Now, what I'm kind of waiting for for Beast Coast here is actually for this Ari to come online here. Already with an early magic pen boost. Oh, just kidding. Gang, it's away. Oh! Oh, just missed. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go back to my freebie spot now. <laughs> that feels bad. But um, I'm, I'm waiting for this Ari here with, with the magic pen boots early, the Sork Shoes. Um, I'm waiting for it to just finally get, get it. Go in on top of Fat Booty. Fat Booty, he does have to cleanse to cleanse the charm, but I'm kind of waiting for that pressure to start mounting. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe even get some good clear, somehow get the jungler up. Uh, Ocean Drake goes over to not allowed to lose. Um, seeming as how 
uh, not allowed to lose. Grabbing up that Ocean Drake really kind of shows, though, that there's not going to be too much, at least on the bottom side of the map, that Beast Coast can do to affect the mid lane. But I almost feel like they need to somehow get the Ari out of the mid lane with enough pressure to then influence the spot lane because right now there's nothing you can do. A flash force out of Hyperion and a Lord Skelly to 55 Mokers down here. He makes a surprise for his entrance and just blows up Hyperion on this Lux. That's a 3-0 Lucian. And Lorsa in the meantime on the top lane is going very low. Forced to flash out. Great play from Vaze. The counter the detriment in bot lane. But here you see Krusty Fart Milker hang. <laughs> God, that's toxic. Yeah. Oh, Charm misses out though, and Adam is going to be taken down about half HP. Taunt's going to be used there, but as well as the Stand United, great blast cone usage from Salamander Man disengages and wastes the Stand United. Vase is going to get a lot of tower plating off top. Right, so a lot just happened there, and a lot of this kind of resulted from. Oh, we have more engagement here. Yeah, there's just even more engagement in the jungle. Guys, Farmer gonna be dropped really low. Four flash by Simon Man secures the kill. That's a good shutdown. Dark Scorpion is gonna chase. He gets another kill. Ignite dropped on him. He, he's gonna flash forward to try to get the kill as well. Flash from Fat Booty lands a stun. That's a 5 0 Lucian already. He's still so low. You see the zap landing. Oh, he's so low. We just want someone to finish it off. Maybe it's the Jinx Rocket available. No, it is not. Ooh. And that is Hyperion that goes down to do another Arcano Pulse. Right, while all that's going bot lane, there's also Ooh. plenty of time for the top lane to. Go out for 1v1. Now wet no noodle fight. We don't yeah. care. <laughs> right, but you're going to see a lot of poppy pressure coming out when you see a people on the other sides of the map. But that bot side fiesta, it's not a fiesta. There was a lot of actually strategy behind it. All of it started when we saw the vertical jungling actually get um, eliminated when Salamander Man on the Ramus showed up on top lane to try to gank the Shen that based. When that happened, that was blue team signal to go get the dragon and start all this craziness on bot side and really try to get their jinx going. But unfortunately, all kind of blew up in the hands of Lucian, who just has a massive lead at this point in the game. Yeah, 5-0 Lucian. I can't even think how you would begin to deal with that. 1,800 gold ahead of this Lux right now. Uh, already with a finished Bork and Berserker's Greaves. Gonna be outputting a lot more damage at this point in the game, and you have to think at some point Dark Scorpion is gonna have to be rotated up in the mid, and or even I even decide they don't have any tower platings here off bottom. They're gonna eventually just get this tower, but it's right now gonna keep snowballing this lead, keep it in a lane phase for a bit. We know Fat Booty's safe, so until they start feeling like uh, the Zerath's in a little bit of trouble, that'll probably be when they swap it. But so right now, I think they're oh, they're very happy to stay in this lane, despite the vertical jungling, despite all the attention that's been towards the bottom half of the map. You still have this massive two v two lead, and as long as that keeps going for you, you're gonna want to snowball that as much as possible. Keep the laning phase going, keep the two v two, and just have Lucian just run out of control. Is he fart milker trying to be a crusty fart milker? whatever that is. So I'm in a man actually putting on his little juke shoes here, but it's not going to matter. He's going to he's not he's going to go down, but not before Adam gets a trade kill back onto the cane. The cane though benefits getting those orbs for his transformation. Uh those are melee orbs, so we'll do good things for him. Meanwhile, more wet noodle stuff's happening in the top lane. Let's look bot lane. <laughs> <laughs> he's kidding. Actually, Lois is really struggling here with the poppy damage. Thing is, though, that he's somehow sustaining through this lane. So right a lot now. of that's because of the sunfire the side. cape is really kind of um, putting a lot of hurt down on the Shen, even despite the Tiamat. Uh, that item is really strong as a one-item power spike. Now look, looking towards the other side of the map, where you see some tower plating is going down for the Lucian. 800 cold bounty at just 14 minutes in the game. It's 7 kills to 2. It's already a, almost a 4,000 gold lead. How do you even deal with this in this kind of deficit? I mean, you play to your win strategy. Your strategy is sit back, scale up, and then prepare for a big team fight and win it all there. So these small skirmishes don't really favor, favor red side. But blue side did draft for the early game, so that's where a lot of this gold lead's coming from. Blue team's almost a little bit on the timer as we get a gank here. It's a good ult from Unicorn. The tidal wave is going to stop down man to man. Taunt still lands, but it's the same United coming in. And that's going to be Lorsa down there in the bot lane. He's going to drop really low. Ignite is dropped. The rocket misses, but still a reset for Lord Skellington. See if he can't get on a Unicorn. That's a self-heal. Hyperion gets that kill. Reset again. And that's a good zap landing. Can they finish the kill? No! Oh, very close. Oh... I, th I think Lord Skellington just backed off just a bit too early there. Trying to play a little bit too safe. Know that he's losing, but... 
The two safe. Ooh, that booty nearly Ooh. sniping Hyperion out there in the dark. All right, so this is great play though for Beast Coast. They pull it back. They get two kills, but. I think the big thing though is that they don't get the shutdown. Oh, the on shutdown on Lucian would have been huge. Oh, oh flash forward by Christy Farm Milk. If he can't get this onto the Ramus, he's going to keep holding until that shield goes down. No, he's not going to get it. Taunt lands and. Boy, you just hinted. <laughs> he's trying to make the big play, <laughs> really response. trying to pressure, um, force this early game advantage that they had. But you're doing it without the Lucian. You really shouldn't try to be making plays without the Lucian. This is the man that's going to carry you through the early game and really try to close out this game before this Jinx comes online, before your tanks on the red side scale. Flash away by Hyperion, just disrespecting the Lucian damage right now. Didn't need to be anywhere near there, especially with the ADC not even in your lane yet. And Fair Scorpion's getting even further ahead on this Lucian, even though he's not he hasn't gotten anything recently, and even though those last three kills have gone over to Beast Coast, he's still just kinda of farming and being a happy little Lucian, just like what happy little Lucians do. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna get a lot of gold off this first turret here. Or it's not first turret, but solo turret, duo turret he got a turret, I'm sorry. Um that's a lot more gold and resources. It, it's a triple turret minus one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, it'll be a Drake. When Drake started up, by not allowed to lose, they'll actually secure that fine. Good tidal wave disengages anything for now, but they're actually kind of stuck in the pit. Dark Scorpion will be forced to fight here. It's keeping really good spacing. Let's see, Farmaker is going to keep the Ari away. Taunt lands here onto Dark Scorpion. He's still not dead yet. Let's see, Farmaker do what he can to stay alive. Ari really, really low. It's like it's just going to be his life. And he will go down. What, Fat? Why are you in the pit, Fat Booty? What are they're you doing? They're flashing to the pit. Our He's going to die for it. He doesn't have the mobility to get out. Yeah. I don't know what that was. <laughs> That's another three kills for Beast Coast. They'll happily trade that for Cloud for Clown Drake. They don't really care about right, that so at all. Right, so what we saw there was a little bit of miscommunication there. As the Lucian dashes out of the pit, we see the Zareth, who, as I said, doesn't have a way over the wall, flash over the wall. So this disjointed fight actually causes another death for uh, not allowed to lose. And that was actually a shutdown too, not quite sure who got that. Uh, I think it was Ari that got the kill onto the cane. I believe um, that's right. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who got it, it's not, not a big deal. All we know is that a few more bounties on the side of Beast Coast, you know that then they have the momentum. They actually have the pressure and they get the bot lane tower now as a result. Right, and what's important to notice here is originally we were talking about this huge differential between Lucian and Jinx, kind of the win conditions for both of these teams. Now, the gold disadvantage is only about 600. That's still big. But remember, Jinx is going to get stronger and stronger as this game goes on. Your Lucian is on a timer with respect to what Red Team brought to the table in their draft. Yeah, I almost feel like, you know, they, they had a good plan. They knew what they wanted to do, but they didn't have the, they didn't have the next step. They kind of said, okay, great, we got it. Oh, what's next? And they weren't prepared for it, and they were kind of punished for it. And the next thing you know, we saw that 3.8k gold lead that a lot of loot just had, and now it's all the way down to 500. Despite being down, despite Beast Coast still being up a turret, um, I don't think it even matters. They're, they're up a turret and a kill, but I guess it's that first blood gold, the first blood kill and tower that uh, that not a lot of loot have. That's basically what's holding them in the slight advantage in that gold section. Right, that's probably right. And like I said, Lucian still has a little bit of an advantage. We still have CS advantage on the jungle. That's where a lot of that gold advantage is coming from still. Looks like it was uh, Rift Tail started up because he fart milker, and he's in a little bit of trouble, forced to burn his ultimate here. She could taunt forward from Shen to try to keep him alive because he fart milker. He should walk out of this fine. Lorsa, very tanky on the Shen, so he'll be fine too. But that's actually a great charm that's landing and ignite down onto Dark over. He gets blown that's up. That's a lot of gold going over to the R. And Unicorn gets caught out as well, and that's a kill for Vaze, and all of a sudden, that's eight straight kills. Right. Beast Coast, Coast there, yeah, was burning. able to kind of punish the sneaky Rift Herald attempt, and was able to force um, Kane out, and also kind of get a lot of these cooldowns at Shen as well. And so what this creates is a sort of like 4v3, if you will, on the other side of the Rift Herald, and that's where we will see the Ari getting the assassination on Lucian. And as soon as that man goes down, there is really not a whole lot you can do in this early stage of the game. He's the one with all your gold and advantage right now. Rift Herald will go over to the side of Beast Coast. And we see the Shen here. It looks like there's going to be another fight. 
not quite sure why. Nice taunt lands here onto Vaze. Follow up knock up here. Vaze, so he's somehow finding a way to get out. That's another cane ult. Wow, that thing's a short cooldown. And Lorf says actually you need to secure the kill on the Vaze. And Vaze is the one with the Eye of the Rift Herald. Nice little consolation prize, I guess. Right, at least he gets it. The worst thing that could have happened there is you take the Rift Herald and no one picks up the Eye. You know, it, some people argue, you know, is it worth a kill? Is is it better just to let the eye fade away? But, you know, we'll see how they use no. it and how many turrets they get. Depends how, how good that trade is. Well, as of right now, it is actually not allowed to lose that. Somehow they have the tempo now in a bit. Oh, the headbreak goes way down in Quincy <laughs> Farm oh. He snipes that kill. How do you disrespect? You gotta have those, you gotta have the, the side wars just right. respecting. Their top side jungle is almost right pitch side. black right now. They didn't have time to take the reward line and move it back to respect the advancing blue team. So, Hyperion though, with she had her flash available, she could easily count out of that. Adam dashes forward, misses the charm, and he gets caught out by his arrow stun, and he goes down. Quincy Farm Milker gets another kill for himself. That's a shutdown. And all of a sudden, it's a 5v3. Our parents just respond, but it's still a 5v4. It's offset death Right, timers. and that's exactly how this play is happening. They get a kill. Before that next kill responds and comes um, back to the team, they get another kill. So it's constantly a 4v5 over and over, and they were able to do that three times in a row, I believe. Looks like it's going to be another Clown Drake for not allowed to lose, but it looks like Beast Coast, they're over by the Baron area. I wonder if they're going to start that up. No, they actually do not. Said it's going to be a free clown drake going over. That's two now for them. They've evened up the kill score. They've taken a one turret score lean, and that's why they're up two and a half k now. So all, we, we we just saw Beast Coast fall down so far early. They pulled it back, and now they're falling back behind again. Both these teams are unrelenting aggression, and we've seen a lot of skirmishes and a lot of fights, despite who had the advantage and who had the map positioning. And we have a lot of them just basically just making up for um being behind or whatever situation they were originally put in this is a lot of bloodbath a lot of fighting and they are just looking to outplay each other and there's a lot of great plays coming out already surprisingly we saw crazy farm milker start zero four he's pulled it back a little bit now with the black cleaver he's gonna be a very strong red cane he's gonna find a way to strip down those tanks stay pretty healthy by doing a lot more damage because of the red cane passive and um on top of that, because he just gets all that HP back, he will also be extremely tanky. And as we see now, he's going to be going for, uh, I think, I think it's the, uh, uh, Death Dance. I'm not sure, though. I think yeah, that appears is. to be a Death Dance. I'm, I'm a gold player, what <laughs> do I know? <laughs> was, uh, there's another Wet Noodle fight, this time it's in the bot lane, um, looking elsewhere. <laughs> wow, that camera timing was impeccable. <laughs> Hyperion! She gets caught out! Right, because you have... Oh. But Adam's also caught... What happened? An impeccable bubble there. I don't actually know what happened. That's a great, great bubble. Your unicorn, though, she's gonna drop really low. Flash over the Salmon, man, he secures the kill. It's like the Ignite going down. It'll be a trade there. Zerath picking up that kill. But there's a huge tempo advantage for the side of not allowed to lose. They have three on the Baron, two recalls for Beast Coast, and this should be free, even though they... Even though they're actually spotted on the Baron Ward, is Jinx Rocket available? Yes, it is. Do they dare try to steal it? Well, it'd be that? crazy to see a steal here. But what we just saw was a lot of pressure coming out from the blue team. This is because they have this tank, Kane, who has enough items now. Jinx Rocket, Jinx Rocket. Ooh. Oh, misses. Yeah, this is going to be a Baron secure there. But as I was saying, we have a tanky Kane who's not afraid to face check and look for these picks, look for these engagements, and Red Side still has not moved their wards up to that dark jungle there. So, as Kane is face changing, And I don't think they can yeah, anymore. Now they need to move them even far, farther back. And on top of that, that's a waste of the Rift Herald. They don't actually get anything out of that take earlier. Yeah, it was probably timing out, and they just had to pop it down, favorite. and that's, that's what they got for it. Gold lead, it's back up, it's swelling, it's almost 6k at the moment. A huge difference in the jungle, 3k for Krusty Fart Milker on this game. It's actually almost 3.5 now. Um, Lucian still with 1400 gold lead over the Jinx. We haven't said anything about Dark Scorpion recently, but he has been pumping out damage to team fights. He's been a part of it, he's gotten 4 assists since his 5 0 start. And so he's been a very positive influence oh, for this absolutely. team. Absolutely. Lucian has this mobility and is able to move around the map a lot quicker than some other ADCs, and Jinx in particular. 
And what they have in their comp is not just one that looks for picks, but one with the long range Zareth and the highly mobile Lucian that's able to follow up on this kind of pseudo engage that you have from the Kane and the Shen. So even though they don't have this grand entrance that other team fight oriented um, champions have, they still have enough crowd control to get a small skirmish started and enough mobile damage or range damage to follow it up. Looks like Beast Coast setting up for a little bit of a of a, a bush pile here. We're just called a little, little this, they're dipping into into their package of Gouda from Wisconsin. That's where my name is Jeff is from. They got it from Jeff. He's on my team, rotation relegation, fun fact. Right, I believe they were looking for a all. Shen rotation or a rotation to the Shen, but they really don't have a reason to go down there. But Shen's already down there, and blue team's just gonna go up and pressure top side turret and start this 4-1 off. Down there, man. He's actually baiting Krusty Farm Milker here onto the Jinx. He goes down low. Old born onto the Ramus. So they're going to go back to the fight here. Very tanky. Holy lands a three man knockup. Zany is going to go down too. And he's actually turning this one around. Pepudi, he drops on his own. He actually gets one kill out of it too. And everything's going to hell for Beast Coast super quick. Flashes away. No. Adam will secure that kill. Dark Scorpion, he'll secure the other under Lord Skellington. Super great, great high mechanical right, fight. That's there. the power of a tank. You're engaging on a tank, essentially, when you're fighting this cane, and they have the mobility and the range. We saw the Zareth ult and the Qs coming out when no one else was even on the screen um, in this 4v1 with the cane. That booty landed on some good snipes there. Haven't said also too much about him yet. 4-1 on the Zareth. Oh, maybe Loris is in trouble here. We see Salamander Man, he's going back around. Doesn't actually get knocked up. Taunt lands here. Although he gets the rel the uh, relentless charge doesn't actually land here. Uh, dash out by Larson. These barrenmates are doing so much damage, and this is to being turned so quick here. And everyone's down here for the side of not allowed to lose. And that's to be a kill on the Salamander man. Beast Coach is reaching a bit too far for too long. And also now we have four in the bot lane. Uh, all three. Fat Booty's being greedy. He wants right, to Right, and it's so hard to play from behind against this style of play because you have these split pushers and normally the idea is okay they're pushing down mid we're gonna lose that inhibitor let's go kill the one man and make this a 5v4 but when your one man is as tanky as the shen is you actually can't kill him until the rest of the team is ready to collapse on you and what do you do what you need to do is you need to move your damage it... over and see if you can uh punish him with the damage and maybe leave some of the tanks behind to catch the wave that's crashing into your nexus as an RE player, personally, at this point, you kind of feel like it's on Adam now. Or sorry, it, it's on uh, d -d 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 -um <laughs> to, to get onto the back line. Somehow land, land a charm on Lucian. Very unprotected, although he does have heal, does have Unicorn by his side to throw an ebb and flow on top of him to heal him. As well as Fat Booty, too. Um, we almost feel like it's down to Adam to try to split up this fight a little bit. And at least make it so that their back line, the Jinx, the Lux... Uh, Ramus and Poppy, they can all kind of kite back and deal with the Kane and Shen on top of them. And Adam, he's kind of started finding a way to, to 1v3 the backline of not a lot. Of right, moves. the assassination potential of Ari cannot be undermined because there is very low mobility. And then if you hit the crazy level charm on Lucian, especially, now all of a sudden blue team falls apart. But you have to have the vision, which they have gotten down now, it seems, um, and just set up for the pick and set up this play. And if, even if you trade one for one with the RA for a Lucian or even the Zareth, now you have a more winnable scenario for Red Team. So, Man Man looking for something there is actually anything. All, all, he, all he finds in that little attempt was a little stun from a fat booty. <laughs> Love that interaction. If you're inside of a wall, any interaction that involves a wall, whether it be Bard Q or Poppy E's, we saw there. Oh. Results in a stun. Bye, Adam. <laughs> Bye, Nami. Right, so this is... That means our question mark painting. Oh, bye Salamander. <laughs> what is happening? Flash out for Salamander Man, see if he can't get away here. Fat Booty trying to snipe, doesn't actually get it. And Salamander Man actually gets away, and the decent amount of damage then is dropped on the Dark Scorpion here. Lucian, it's still a 4v4. No Nami versus no Ari. Feels like it would probably still benefit not allowed to lose here. Lord's just split pushing in the top lane base. We'll go deal with him. Christy Farmilker though is up there too, but so Salamander Man, oh, next thing you know, it's a 4v1 again. We've seen what happened last time. Do they do anything different? Sandy United lands. The Kane's gonna stay alive. There's the Kane all this time on the Salamander Man. 
And that's a lot of health healed already. And Lucian gets a kill onto the Jinx. We were focusing on Kane and Jinx right, died. Kane is so good not, at not, stalling not out Kane. fights, especially when we have the Shen for your emergency shield. And yeah, that, that shield came oh, in so clutch. They bought so much time that the Lucian and the Zareth are able to get in position and start laying damage down across what looked like a 4v1, turned into essentially a 4v4, but Blue telling him is so far ahead that 4v4 is not something that Red Team really wants to pick here. And next thing you know, we have an 8 and 1 Lucian. Eye Edge is done, as well as one Zeal item. That's 50% crit on top of the Bork damage being dropped down. Fat Booty with the Morellos, Ludens, and Zanya. So a little bit of defensive look, should he need it for an RE to engage. And then the Kane now with the completed Death Stance, just even more tanky than ever. Top of the Spirit Visage, just going to be healing and living for even a longer amount of time. It almost feels like it's impossible for Beast Coast at this point to win a team fight. They're down 10k. All right, it looks like both teams are setting up for Baron here. Red team poking in, trying to get Vision down across the wall. Blue team trying to deny that. We have Kane on the side, also looking for the flank. You know what? What happened to Purple? I miss saying <laughs> Purple team. Yeah, I started playing back when Purple team was a thing. But right now it's Red and Blue. Um, I don't remember if there's something to do with Where's colorblind issues. Red, red, white, and blue. It could just be red and blue. This is the classic two colors you see in any kind of RPG. Oh, but who cares? Krusty Farm Booker, he's going to start the fight with one knockup. Unicorn, he sends, she sends that away forward. Nice, uh, taunt by the Shen. He's going to blow up Hyperion. It's not Man Man trying to peel here. He gets a kill on a Unicorn. Uh, he trades his life. Dark Scorpion picks up that one. Adam, he trades though for Dark Scorpion. And he's going to go golden. But it doesn't matter. Nice snipe out of Fat Booty. Gets one. Vaze. He's going to try to cut his way around the fight. Here comes the Hammer of Justice. Hits Shen away. Now he's going to try to get out. Chase going forward. Nice slow lands. Christy Farmaker is on his way here. He has a red buff. If he can get on top, maybe he can slow him. Don't know. Jinx is in the base. Clearing out the bottom supers. But there goes Shen into the base to try to do this. Thing. Also, Zayath, he's going to go towards top lane to try to knock down that top lane tower. Lars is putting out so much pressure here. Yeah, a bit of a delayed call here. Because it looks like they're going for the back door while Kane chases away the poppy. Make sure she can't recall and contest um, the play on the Nexus. This is tilting. <laughs> Poppy is very hard to this catch. This is tilting. Yeah, but K Kane's going to catch him. Eventually. <laughs> uh, Cleanse is going to be perfect for Bat Booty. It means he's not going to get away from the top. Nobody goes golden, so he'll be fine for a little bit. Will Lursa try to do what he can? No, that's going to be a shutdown. Jinx gets that one on this earth. When does Kane stop? <laughs> when does he stop? Poppy only gets no, tanked if the lower health yep. bar is. There she goes. Kane, Kane got it. But disengage from Unicorn there is going to get Lursa away. And it looks like just a bit of an oversight, but either way, it's two inhibs. Third one is exposed, and we kind of know a lot of losers are going to have to be looking towards that top side. Beast Coast, they're going to be desperate for a fight. Hyperion gets caught out yet again. Gets it over to the Lucian, too. We, 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 we've seen time and time out Hyperion just getting caught on this game, and then in the same exact spot. They had a ward there, but you know that they're... You know that not a lot of losers in that mid lane. You know that Crusty Front Milkers gonna be looking for those picks. If they know where you are, they ha they even even if we know that they don't have wards there, you have to expect that there's wards there because of how much uh, not a lot of loose was pushed mm -hmm. up there. Now eight deaths on this Lux, three more than any other member in this game. Uh, now just two more than any member. three more than any member on the team. That's what's kind of hard about being an immobile champion. Everyone wants to put defensive tools into Jinx, but Lux is also immobile and squishy and gets punished very hard by this Roman Seek sort of pick comp that we have going here. Now we have five Drakes, we have three Clown Drakes, two Oceans. That's a lot of sustain, that's a very huge roam potential. That not a lot of loose have, they can easily control these major neutral objectives now if this game could continue to go on, and they're on the Baron as I speak, as I say. Looks like Red Team is... Adam lurking, lurking around the backside. Yeah, Red Team is now so just starting to move over. Find assassination. Will some enemy man get here in time with the smite? We'll see his barons are down below 5k. You see the calling come out to try to push them away. Some enemy yeah. man's here. Does he have flash? Yes, he has smite. Goes down to best 1000. No, great smite from Chrissy Fartmucker secures this. No attempt for some enemy man. And it's actually Chrissy Fartmucker. He's going to push forward here. That's a great charm. The lancer on Chrissy Fartmucker. See, he's going pretty low. No, he'll use the cane ult. 
gonna heal quite a bit here, right? Yes, wow, a heal. And this is Sandy United going down as well. The Lorsa, he's in the base. It's a 4v3 on the other side of the map. So that should be one that not allowed to lose wins. And we see them actually losing him on that side too. Lorsa's gonna see dropping really low on the jinx. Thunder Man, he'll go down. Unicorn secures that one. Lorsa still fighting base. It's still a wet noodle. <laughs> it's a very wet noodle. A lot of damage coming oh out of Oh my the lord, shed. there's turret shots. And finally, we'll see both Nexus Hurts drop in. This will probably be the Nexus, be the game. Be game one, 35 minutes. And that is it. 25 kills to 16. Game one goes to not a lot of right, A very aggressive game and a very explosive finish to both. So very good game by both teams.